Hello. Um, I know I said I'd stop, but I've just been informed that there is um, there's another ending that I didn't get. So I I I missed. I can't believe that. I I should have gone back and done that. I can't believe I just forgot. Anyway. Skip. Can't just pause till. Right. This is where the, the second ending happens. It's all double legend you can hear, you heard once you were undercover. We get some old. Solacistic building, rough break against your coat, waiting for targets to come trouncing out of the double doors across the street. Can contraband with intent to sell. Working in this case for days, blurring here and there due to the constant migraines and hangovers that you used to blame on the immediate effects of romantic withdrawal. Tell me I had intel. This time will be different. He died five weeks ago now. He needs to get back to work or he might have just swallowed in self pity forever. Full of room of your mute coloured newsboy camped down over your face, one of the wide lapels of your coat. But incognito enough to become just another hunched, border dark figure in this part of town. No need to look this way, ma'am. Just out for a cigarette break. There's a street lamp nearby. A few locals sitting on the curb, steadily waiting on the last buzz of the evening to roll round on its rote 20 minutes late schedule. Same delay every night. Passengers were always sure to show up on time, just in case. One troll, the younger man, kneeling down on his heels, tracing small lines through the fine gravel and detritus on the side of the road with a plastic stick. It's about it with almost sober attention to detail, setting the blood never so slowly along the road, his head tilting in the passive, exhausted fixation on what he was drawing. I've been thinking about paying the toll more and more lately. Was that as hesitant as a hesitant afterthought? Well, they clearly debated saying out loud. I don't think I'm falling apart or anything, just directionless? All the troll responded now, finishing the sentence. Exactly, just directionless. Same thing every day. I have something to hold on to. It's not come naturally, natural like to you. You keep chasing and you come across desperate. What if I am desperate? Like, what if it feels like I either need to fix something, anything? Why do you pay the toll and just disappear? I talk about that. Sounds like something illegal. The old troll left. Sounds like his throat was filled with the gravel the young troll was drawing. It'll be alright. We all feel that way from time to time. The young troll nodded. In the street, the bus was rounding the corner 20 minutes late. Right on time. Push yourself up from the wall. Excuse me. Not to turn to face you curiously. This is about a toll. He smiled sheepishly. Just an old legend. This is a toll road outside every city. It's on all of them, some way or another. You can only find it if you're just going on aimlessly. I also not thinking so much about trying to get back. At which point, right? Nothing matter to you. Think of driving and it comes around. You drive on it, sure. You drive and drive on and on forever for some folks. And forever as it takes you exactly where you need to be. I always want to be your guide. I'll just be keeping you there and you'll never see an exit again. Some of us like that idea. He shrugged. Some of us ain't got nothing else. By the way, if you want to drive, you gotta pay the toll. It costs more than you can imagine. If you want to get to that boy's hole. <laughs> Bus hissed to a stop. Lowering down to a street level as the door slid out noisily open. Watch all flashed you one last toothy smile. I guess my bus now. I don't worry about it. Do not worry too much about it? Just an old story. It was part of you turned back around in time just to see a target slipping away into the night. You missed him again. Decision you, decision you just made at Mario Rail Station. No. Well, you, this time wouldn't have been you. The decision she made. You should think about that decision while she burns through the fuel like the motorcycle's engine. Her entire body feels sticky and putrid, bathed in sweat from humid night air. It's just been spattering against her visor, her horns, her hair, but she's not thinking about them either. So it's perpetually hidden just below the horizon, bleeding their gl glows into the low. Lower sky, backlighting the world. Beyond the red streaks in the, is the dark, starlit void that composes the night that's far away from the city. Awfully familiar, that feeling of drifting out into the great nowhere that reptiles have become. Awfully familiar. The hours pass and pass and pass. Sun's rise, sunset, spin on. Seen in her mind stayed the same. Not really as he looks like, she still sees that painted horizon, hued so violently in reds and bruised blacks. Always ever 
farther into the swamp and crops and sickly things hidden in the muck that the wild proclaimed so long ago. Table scraps, all of it. The wild had given sensible excuse for what was there long before long dead trolls came with their tools and their grand ideas. The thoroughfare out where the crops all fall away. Fields wide open and empty where no one had intended to land for generations. The toll road finds her. Here, days since she began to drive, siphoning gas from the abandoned cars littering the highway just keep moving. The toll road looms. The entrance look once tacked onto the side of the highway. There's only the tall sign reading Toll Road in peeling pain. Her destination is listed. What would it cost, she wonders? That old troll, surely dead now, right? It'd cost more than she could ever imagine to drive here. So I make arm blocking a path forward. Something operated by a mechanical box. I should deposit something. Please forward to read the fine print. Thank you for visiting. How long toll is 3.57? Brown wrinkles, 3.57, that's it? Here's her pocket, which draws her required lips and reaches to drop it into the collector. She reaches, she's the blood again. Bruce knuckles sit in a dry, crack stained into green. It covers her arms, covers her chest and her face, and it all leaves down to the shaking, clenched fist she holds. It's automatic toll booth. She can finally bring herself to let the money fall in. She's the stains of blue on her palm. Quiz having carved so rough against her hand while she held them. He carries some of it with them into the collector. So the last piece of her partner sucked down into this hole. They're beginning of nowhere. The just screen flashes green and the automatic arm rises slowly. Long time there was nothing. An abandoned vehicle. She don't need the gas. She might to get the tank full. She wants nothing more than for it to keep going forever. So she drives on. Aimlessly, as the man had said, punching expenses behind her, the landscape is developed into what could be a museum. Alongside abandoned factories, sheet metal and automotives and electronics, skeletons vault stabilizers for rockets to stand, ornery on burnt launch pads. So a that reads, Turn around, you missed me. It comes these listed, but a smiling, archetypally attractive troll stands to the side, posed as if he were trying to stay out of the letter's way, lest the reader miss the message. So he draws closer, his smile translates into a grimace, and a scowl, that is laid down from his distorted face in his hand. His cup to his opposite elbow is clenched into a fist. He passed, by, passed, the bill, passed the billboard by and he's gone. Turn around. You missed me. Cheekily, she looks down at her hand again, gripping the handlebars of her motorcycle. Blood is still there. Of course it is. She dragged Ormsey down by the hem of his coat after all, ripped his legs out from under him, flipped him onto his back and kneeled over his weak, sickly frame. What are you doing? Turn around, your partner is... He's gonna punch haphazardly toward his face. This gl glanced off of his mask, which he held over his mouth to compensate for its broken strap, and slammed into the concrete floor. Honestly, through tears, began to laugh. You missed me! You missed me! Next punch did not miss. Not the next after that. One, two, three, four. Crack. Stop! Stop! He cried out through his cracked teeth, blood and spit smearing down his face with every plosive. His mask shattered and sliced through his lips, and it lay uselessly in pieces across his mangled jaw. You can't kill me. You'll fail, don't you get it? Shame me when I said you had to choose. Turn around! Your partner is... Then the bomb went off. Too late. He raised her fist again, a guttural, animalistic cry bubbling from her throat, halfway down a sob and a scream. So then she felt an overwhelming pain in her side. She had to see the blade withdrawn from her ribs. So back to the hidden chamber in Ormsey's coat. Pulled his hand back to strike again, but she was faster. She grabbed his wrist, first with one hand and then both, and crushed it into pieces. Once he screamed, so he reached his limply hanging hand, and her knee blocked his other arm. When she raised his fist this time, she was laughing. Oh, wait, you have to give me a sword, remember? Your rule, you really have to give me a chance to... I lost that sword because of you. She laughed again, lump her throat friend to choke her. I lost everything because of you. He looked up at her note in awestruck horror. Not only as he said, his wild eyes, the veil had fallen away. For a brief moment, there was vindication. She turned herself as everything she, as he knew she was. A coward. An egomaniac. A liar. A killer. Just the same as him. Inside the road is dotted with windmills. And from that brief period in history, Repton's leadership flirted with the idea of sustainable energy. But there are so many of them. Too many to be part of such a poorly executed campaign. Blades trace their lazy circles around and around. She falls into a trance, watching them. All this motion, no matter where she looks. Some of her flashing red lights on the ends of their arms, and that still work after all these sweeps. Others have collapsed to the ground in expensive heaps. She wonders briefly what it would feel like to try and ramp up the highway divider and ride through those fields. She gets close enough to one of the windmills to have some idea of its majesty. 
Much bigger than she would expect, she's sure. But it isn't powerful enough for her to try. She ran the toll road for what must have been weeks. It seems possible to tell. Every night seems just like the last. Every stretch of the road carries the same consistency. With factories are on her left and windmills on her right. Completely, utterly, irrevocably alone. She has to recover what was left of Necron. She found bits and pieces of what was left of him. Put them into a small pile. Stained her palms. What had she wanted? What she hoped for in those moments before all hell broke loose and the word finally rested well, finally what she had done. I think she returned her peace to Orica. She asked bitterly. No. She was only trying to fame responsibility for something for once in her life. The decision she hadn't earned. Could never earn, especially now. She had never been anything other than what she is, no matter how she tried. No, that's not true. She had never been anything more than what she is. No matter how florally and profoundly she told herself she was going to try, lying to herself through her teeth. Pathetic. So pathetic. Now she arrives between factories and windmills built on dead land. She may as well stay here forever. Her mouth tastes bitter. She's not even slept in weeks, but she has hardly noticed the difference. She closes her eyes. On the horizon, the first and only exit from the tall road rises to meet her. On all sides, the scenery shifts from dust industry to swamps and cornfields. Same as it ever was back on the outskirts of Stronghold 21. She opens her eyes. She is right where she needs to be. Cross stands in front of her, a child, once she recognises. Your eyes are finally open. But you are not awake. We're possibly the Titans. She hears the sound of wind between stalks of corn. It's like static. Do you remember when I said there is nothing here? How you just come here? See nothing? You were afraid of nothing? But now, nothing is in you. You're afraid of yourself. As you look inward, I see it there, gaping. Please, put down your sword. Well, drifts into focus, then sways out again. She has a head turning to look at her hands again. Straight with blood, straight with blood. It's not fresh, fresher than it was when it was spilled. She feel rot spreading, gnawing, crawling up her throat to putrefy in her mouth. You found the sickness inside of you. You found it too late. Now the lines between you and the sickness are blurred. There is no room for what ifs anymore. This grief has followed along in your footsteps, like gaseous agony for sweeps. It's finally caught up with you. Now your steps are a monster's steps. This emptiness, it scares me. You scare me. Drop the sword, please. She drops the sword. It clatters to the ground. Husky smiles cautiously. Her left pick out to the side. And she realizes that they have been hiding behind it. So he didn't come to kill us. That's good. Then why are you here? Why is she here? She needs to be. There's something she has to see. She smiles, chokes on her own breath. It's about what could have been. How about she wants to come here someday and be something for these children who watched her now from the half closed barn doors, terrified. She nods curtly and, like all that time ago, moves without thinking. A voice calling to her, a voice without words. Is it the corn? It's the corn, isn't it? It's the corn. Over the sounds of a motorcycle's dying engine, you hear the sounds of the radio's channeling, perfectly white, perfect white noise. It blends seamlessly with her shifting sounds in the fields as she takes her first steps into the corn. Her dark eyes peer out of her from the gaps between the stalks. And my, my eyes see her too, in greater detail than she could possibly imagine. That grows louder, clearer. Dead into the fields, her boot crushes the crops down. She turns her head up to the sky. For the briefest of moments, I see the barrier between her world and infinity, and then everything is gone. Game crashed. Um. So, I guess we know what's in the. Uh, we know what's in the corn now. It's not what I thought it was, not what any of us thought it was. Give this thing a fucking second. Okay, there we go.
I don't know what that means. I'm so confused. Now that that's it. That's it for Snowbound Blood Volume 11. And um, this was a quick one. I just wanted to do that real quick. Just to see what it was like. Anyway, it's half three in the morning. I need to upload these and get to sleep. So uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. Tell me what you thought. Subscribe and uh, good night.